Are you tired of jumping between various interfaces, tools, and scripts when managing vSphere? This session is for you. My name is Vladimir Velikov, and I'm a senior engineer in the vSphere client SDK and plugins team at VMware. Today, we will talk about uh, the UI integrations, how VMware and partners together are bringing consistent UI experience across the hybrid cloud. Please keep in mind this presentation carries no commitment for feature delivery and should not be considered binding for VMware in any way. So let's start from you, the VI admin monitoring and managing your vSphere environment. Regardless of its size, you're surely using lots of tooling, your favorite terminals, the vSphere client is the main tool some storage solutions, backup solutions, DR, analytics, and at one point you just want this to stop. So how do we fix this? A browser with multiple tabs? Well, that's probably not the answer. And how about this? Does it look familiar? Um, I don't think this is uh, what we mean by a single pane of glass experience. Our answer is tight UI integration through vSphere client plugins. And you've seen plugins across the vSphere UI in the navigator and shortcuts on a global level and in the inventory and summary monitor and configure. And plugins can also extend the menus with custom actions. Additionally, apart from the pre-installed plugins shipped with the vCenter server, the usual vSphere environment would contain only a few other plugins from VMware or from other vendors. That said, we are on a mission uh, to grow the plugin ecosystem. And this means both better integration and richer choice of solutions. For example, if you use a DR solution which is not updated frequently, you are not stuck with it without alternative and no longer rely on knowledge silos inside your organization around this solution. We want to resolve these limitations and make solutions really interchangeable. In order to get there though, VMware needs to raise the game and improve the current model in a number of aspects. The way you consume solutions, this is solution discovery, installation, life cycle, and so on the way these solutions are integrating with the UI. So think about performance, standardized UX, and so on, and security. Let's start with the way vSphere solutions and apps are consumed. Solution discovery is now available through the VMware Marketplace, which has significantly grown uh, to provide more than 800 solutions from more than 300 vendors. Quite some of these are layer tabs, uh, meaning that they don't only get deployed on uh, the vSphere infrastructure, but also integrate with the vSphere APIs on multiple levels. So this is inventory services and ultimately UI as plugins. Uh, stay tuned for the commerce capabilities which are about to be launched this fall. The VMware Marketplace supports uh, multiple platforms like vSphere and VMware Cloud and others, as well as multiple formats uh, like virtual appliances, containers, and uh, some others. It is available on marketplace.cloud.vmware.com where you can browse solutions, uh, you're able to use uh, various search and filtering capabilities. And also you can filter by product compatibility. So if I um, select vSphere, I'm able to see more than 800 vSphere solutions here and choose whether to deploy on-prem or VMware Cloud. Some solutions support only one of these, others support multiple target platforms. Deployment of many of these apps can be processed through the marketplace. Uh, when it comes to deploying layered apps, deeply integrating with vSphere, the installation process has uh, 
fully in ownership of the solution vendor in the past. Uh, this has resulted in a variety of uh, ways post-deploy configuration is done, partly through the vSphere UI, partly through some vendor uh, UIs or scripts or processes, even copying around, around config files. Now VMware is changing this kind of installation experience. We are launching an installation framework integrated with the vSphere client itself. This is a significant leap forward as the user will not have to leave the vSphere UI to configure the solution. Instead, the user would set it up and start using the solution directly through uh, the solution's UI plugin. Now let's see a demo of the NSXT installation integrated uh, through this framework, which was just released with vSphere 7.0 update 3. The vSphere client now contains a dedicated NSX homepage where you can trigger the installation of the NSX manager. This is nothing else than a standard uh, OVF deployment wizard where you specify uh, the OVA or OVF template, then a location, compute, storage, and network uh, for the VM that is going to be deployed. And of course, at the end, uh, you need to specify the details of the NSX manager. Those are solution specific parameters required by this particular solution. In the NSXT case, this is some credentials of uh, the important users. Then we specify the host name, NSX manager, a static IP, the net mask, gateway, DNS, and NTP. That's it. So we can start the deployment process of the NSX manager appliance. Uh, we can track it uh, in the recent tasks pane at the bottom. Uh, there are two tasks which are related to deployment of the appliance itself and one uh, responsible for the, the whole installation flow. When the appliance is deployed, the vSphere UI would configure it and power it on automatically. Now the NSX manager has been deployed and after about 10 minutes uh, of boot up time, uh, it would automatically uh, register the NSXT plugin with vSphere. And the vSphere client would uh, also automatically detect the new plugin and the user would be allowed to just click the start NSX onboarding button, which refreshes the browser and navigates to the NSXT plugin automatically. The user can continue configuring NSX from here. Now, this flow is a significant improvement to the previous installation procedure for NSX, which required you to jump between different UIs, enter the same credentials for the same vCenter server multiple times, and so on. Uh, it uh, allows you to also use the vSphere client as a single pane of glass to deploy separate NSX instances to other link vCenters in the same SSO domain. So this is in link mode. You can do this through the install on another vCenter uh, button on the top uh, right corner, as you can see here, uh, which essentially triggers the same flow over again uh, but for another vCenter. What happens here behind the surface is that uh, the vSphere UI injects some parameters into the OVF environment of the new appliance. And when it boots up, it calls back the vSphere client to register the plugin. Uh, all post-deploy configurations uh, happen in the, the NSXT plugin, which is uh, now shown in the vSphere UI. 
to make this uh, work, we haven't used any internal VMware mechanisms. This flow is generic and uh, not limited to NSX in any way. So we are going to roll it out to all partner solutions to integrate with it and this way together deliver seamless installation experience for the vSphere customer. Now let's have a look at the UI integration part. To achieve the goals I mentioned earlier, uh, VMware has fundamentally changed the plugin architecture from local to remote plugins. The main specific characteristic of local plugins is that they deploy a Java middle tier within the vCenter server, which is serving the UI and used to forward requests from the UI to the solution backend. Uh, this is not the case for remote plugins, which enable the plugin UI to be served directly from the backend and re uh, requests are routed through the reverse proxy of the vCenter. This difference is subtle, but extremely important. And it means that there are no external executable bits inside the VCSA. This automatically means guaranteed performance of the vCenter as there is no external code uh, using its resources. Uh, significantly improved security uh, based on a lot thinner API integration. And uh, last but not least, uh, seamless vCenter upgrade. You have probably encountered problems uh, when trying to upgrade vCenter with multiple solutions uh, already integrated with it. So this is a must have, especially in the public and the hybrid cloud. For example, on uh, VMware Cloud Main AWS, VMware needs to do very frequent uh, upgrades of the vCenter servers in the SDDCs. So those cannot be blocked by incompatible solutions. For these reasons, we are announcing the deprecation of uh, the legacy local plugins from the next major release of vSphere. The local plugin architecture was the original one provided with uh, the HTML client. Back in the day, this architecture allowed e easier transition of uh, client plugins from the Flash-based UI but the limitations and the complexity of local plugin architecture were quickly recognized. So in 6.7 U1, remote plugin architecture was introduced and this was quickly followed by a full feature parity uh, with local plugins uh, shipped with the 7.0 version. Subsequently, remote plugins were enabled on the VMware Cloud and AWS as the only supported plugin architecture. As next steps, uh, deprecation of local plugins from the next major release of vSphere has already been announced and uh, local plugins will reach end of life uh, in the subsequent major release. Uh, given these timelines, uh, VMware is aggressively working with partners to uh, migrate to the remote plugin architecture, there is sufficient time. But as soon as uh, the whole plugin ecosystem migrates to remote plugins, uh, the earlier we can uh, start reaping the benefits of this new architecture. While local plugins are still supported, there is a number of security hardening efforts in the vCenter server that uh, they need to comply with. Those mostly don't apply to remote plugins as they have a very thin API surface uh, with which they integrate with the vCenter. The use of SHA-1 hash algorithm is being gradually deprecated in vSphere starting from uh, 7.0 update 2 version and it will be incrementally replaced by SHA-256. From the next major release of vSphere, um, VMware will require all uh, vSphere client local plugins to comply with the FIP standard, which demands uh, highly secure encryption algorithms. The usage of session management filter API was restricted earlier this year 
through a security patch released for multiple versions of vSphere. You probably know about this vulnerability that was discovered in the vCenter. And this vulnerability was exactly related to local plugins. Java Spring library is at the core of the vSphere client and to consume the latest security updates, it has been updated to version 5 in uh, 7 or update 3 release. So what can you expect from UI plugins going forward? As remote plugins are not running on the vCenter server appliance, they have a number of security advantages, like privilege isolation, uh, limiting the access area of the plugin, and avoiding the possibility for user impersonation. The remote plugins also provide much better auditing capabilities. With regards to hybridity, uh, remote plugins have an important advantage, and that is that they are supported on the VMware Cloud on AWS and any future VMware Cloud. This means seamless migration to any VMware supported cloud for customers who rely on the same on-prem solutions today. Uh, one of the major pain points of customers in the context of uh, plugin usability has always been the lifecycle management. Remote plugins provide much better compatibility in that aspect, uh, excluding the plugins from the JVM process of the vSphere client application server also significantly reduces uh, the impact of plugins on vSphere performance. The remote plugin architecture solves the problem with poorly written plugins impacting the whole vSphere UI. For example, in the past, there have been cases uh, where a plugin is slow and this hurts the perceived performance of the vSphere client. So with the new architecture, it becomes more obvious which part of the UI is slow, so uh, the problem can be more easily troubleshooted. Another positive of this model is optimized developer experience. Uh, so for the partners, this means that they do not have to uh, keep pushing their teams into new technologies, but instead use a tech stack that fits the context and knowledge of the teams, ultimately increasing efficiency as well. Partners can also leverage the Kubernetes support in vSAN data persistence platform uh, to build container-based solutions. This is a new breed of uh, Kubernetes services for vSphere, which come with uh, built-in plugins integrated with vSphere client by design. And last but not least, uh, from compliance perspective, uh, vSphere needs to comply with a multiple of security standards which uh, we mentioned earlier. And doing that means frequent update of libraries in the VCSA. Now the vCenter server can adopt a more frequent cadence of security updates uh, of the internal libraries, uh, which is a huge upside for this year. In summary, this is how VMware has set up the landscape of consistent UI experience of the vSphere platform and integrated solutions across the private, public, and hybrid cloud. Please remember to take your survey and reach out to me for any questions, comments, or feedback. Thank you so much.